This is just going to be a video to show some of the things you can do with Rotocraft when you combine with the other tech mods. This is a survival world I've been playing in single player for several weeks now. As you can see, I've got many of the big tech mods installed, though not all of them, so you won't see, for example, Ender IO here. But in theory, you can do with that what you can do with these as well. Anyways, just to show you the kinds of things I have been able to pull off with these mods, you can see there's ridiculous amounts of resources, you know, millions of most of these kinds of ingots, more than I could ever figure out how to use. Same goes for most of the other resources as well. The reason you've got some of these weird things is just the boars have been pulling them up. Anyways, so first things first, here's the extractors. There's eight of them, of course. They're set to process different kinds of ores based off the contents or configurations of the export buses here. This one's currently processing iron, or it would be if it weren't shut down. Um, why is that off, anyway? Extractors on. Oh, that's why it was off. Okay. Um... So, eight, with eight extractors in parallel, it's a lot easier and a lot faster to run than it is, well, just one. So, that's why I've got them set up. They are drawing a lot of power together, something like 400 megawatts of power. Um, that's something you can only really achieve in the end game. I've got a nuclear reactor in another dimension I'll show you. This is a uranium processing setup, also currently shut down for a reactor craft. We'll get to that with the... It's produce, it was producing uranium hexafluoride. We'll get to what that's for later. Uh, here we have, until a second ago it was on, the friction heaters basically for smelting flakes. Uh, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands probably, flakes in the ME system. Uh, well, not as much anymore. That's good. And, well, I'm just trying to convert them all to their respective items. Good thing I turned on the extractors. Anyways, here we've just got some cyclic assemblers. Obviously, that's thermal expansion. They're just processing stuff from magic crops. These are two band graphs. saplings to run it off of. Uh, 60, yes, I do. So we'll turn that back on now. And then, well, that's why. And we should, there we go. Okay. Just producing lots and lots and lots and lots of ethanol because, well, it's good to have it. Here are some centrifuges from Reactor Craft also producing, well, they're taking that uranium hexafluoride, producing uranium dust out of it. This is for the nuclear reactor, of course. We've got a fractionator here making jet fuel for the backup power, which I'll show you in a minute. More cyclic assemblers, and some thermal expansion machines. Uh, it's currently melting down some redstone. I also got you know Billcraft laser set up for making the AE system processors. Uh, it's faster. It's more easily automated. You know, we just got a little backup smeltery here right now. It's seems to be getting filled up with sludge. Anyways, let's put this sapling away. Back here. And that's a camouflage block from expanded redstone. It's. Oh gosh, I'll show you how that works. Oops. Basically, this pressure plate here retracts that abyssal stone block. That's a real abyssal stone block. Now the camouflage blocks, well, this one that's in this space here, has air below it, so it mimics air, both in terms of render and in terms of hitbox, so you can just walk right through it. When I get off the pressure plate, piston pushes the camouflage, or abyssal stone back in place, camouflage blocks turn back into abyssal stone. Anyways, back here we've got a mob farm with a whole bunch of spawn contours, mostly skeletons. We've got some swarm spiders as well. This is the source of those bones, of course, and most of the string. It's quite a high production log farm, although it's actually a little too high production. I don't know why the fans aren't on down there. Oh wait, I do know why the fans aren't on. It's actually... Yeah, it's something we need a minor design change. Basically, there's long delays between the fans which push them up and the harvesters there. And the farm drive that turned on is something to worry about. My ferment's going to hell. Just turn this off. It's all those stupid SP orbs. There you go, you can see the fans being. They're 
active now. Pops around. Alright. That's the mob farm. We've just got some interdimensional liquid transport over here. We've got liquid sodium, tritium coming in from the reactor, deuterium going into the reactor, and this is heavy water coming from elsewhere in the world. Far away, in fact. I'll just use this portal to get back. Um, okay. As you saw here, we've just got a control room control panel, if you like, various parts of the house. You can shut them on and off to redirect power in case something's about to fill up slash explode. Anyways, most of the stuff is stored in miscraft ages. We'll get to that a little bit later. Out here are the actual farms. We've got three woodcutters. There we go. Maxed out, of course. Now we've got fertilizer. These are the things consuming all the bone meal. This one's just set to produce melons because I needed some. Not sure why that's tilted in the middle there, but oh well. And these ones are going nuts on magic crops, as you can see. The crops, they grow really, really fast when you tick them with the fertilizers. It's actually quite impressive. And we've got essence everywhere. A second. Alright. It's filling my screen. There we go. That. We also have some canola, as you saw, because, well, that's where the lubricant comes from, after all. Anyways, over here we have a sugarcane farm. It's using the expanded redstone block breakers. Uh, right now they're... Basically, they just toggle open and close every 15 seconds. They're also being... having their growth accelerated by the fertilizers. We've burned through a lot of bone meal with this setup here. Um, there's five fertilizers for the... There it goes. Five fertilizers for the sugarcane and eight harvesters for the um, magic crops. There's one underneath each plot of land. Of course, fans doing the harvesting. And we here we just have a weather control. Um, so right, I can because I don't like it when it's too loud. So those rainbow trees are from an upcoming update to die trees. They don't have all their features implemented yet. Got this end portal for magic crops. Don't worry about that. These crystals are from Geostrata, of course. It's just my little enchanting room. A lot of levels really, really fast. It makes enchanting machines quite easy. It took forever to crew that many crystals, of course. And these are also from Geostrata. Anyways, let's just dump the remaining stuff. Anyways, let's go to the reactor first. Picked an Arctic bomb because I figured it would make it easier to cool the reactor. Turns out, um, Bombs of plenty of Arctic bombs are actually registered as deserts, so they're hot, not cold. Anyways, the reactor's over here, and it seems to be operating fine. This one's actually a breeder reactor. I had a normal reactor here, but I ripped it out and put in a breeder reactor, because, well, I had more breeder fuel than I did normal fuel. Here we've got some neutron radiation chambers. These are taking deuterium in from the top. You saw that transport system earlier, and converting it to tritium, if we have a transducer, it'll say, yeah full tank of deuterium and it's converting it slowly into tritium and then we'll pump that back out. Deuterium and tritium are for the fusion reactors which aren't in, uh, finished yet. Random ducks don't quite know what to do. Um, we've got a lot of sodium being pumped around. That's what the sodium was for. Uh, hot sodium comes out the top when you pump the cold stuff in the bottom. Hot sodium goes into the heat exchanger which heats these steam boilers which you pump water in. Got great steam, goes out the steam line and into the steam grate and into the turbine, which is currently producing 830-ish megawatts of power, which is good. And because we're just using water, I'm just going to discard it. I don't need it. If I was using ammonia, I'd probably close the cycle. And over here, we have another backup power and chunk loader. This is only producing 33 megawatts of power, so it doesn't really have enough to keep the system running. But say, for example, my jet engines don't work for whatever reason, this will be a piece. Of it. This will be sufficient to run the ME system and some other stuff. It's also my main consumer of lubricant, as you might imagine. It's a 64 jet uh, hydrokinetics. That berry bush is huge. Cave ambience. Anyways. All those resources, they came from a lot of the ores I mined up in another miscraft dimension. I created this for villages. I didn't actually get villages. But what I did get is a oh, nice age where basically only slimes and endermen spawn. So, set up a whole tower of boars here, as you can imagine, as you can see. Set like nine, ten boars. Just run them all off of the power right now. They're 
not receiving any power because I've shut them down because I don't need any more resources. They're, they've all got Silk Touch and Efficiency 5 on them just to make them even more useful. They just pipe the resources back into the ME system again, which automatically routes everything. Just cut this huge slot through the terrain. It's the kind of thing you would not want to see someone doing on your server. I don't know why I didn't use the portal to get back, but oh well. One of the few miscraft ages I've seen was actually really pretty. Most of them are really, really hideous. Let's see. Uh, any of the other ages worth going to? Um, no, that was just a source of Billcraft oil early on. That was an early mining world. That takes me to where I sourced all those crystals. Um, another similar Enderman only age, which made farming crystals easier. No mobs in the caves. And so I forest. Do I have anything that's high forest? I might as well go. I'll show you something I pulled off. Yeah, I took over a, a lich tower and made it my base. My actual original portal is over here somewhere. Somewhere over here. I don't actually know the exact location. Um, which I don't know what direction I want to go. Twilight forest clearing is. Yeah, I'm wearing a Rotorcraft jetpack. That's why I, I can fly. Full set of better armor. These are also from those potion crystals, don't worry about them. Don't know why that hole's there. The experience orbs suggest I've been there. There's my original Twilight Forest portal. Which means this is the way I want to go. Running across the water, of course, this dark craft. Kind of convenient. Just over here, there's going to be a labyrinth. It's been my main source of bedrock for quite a while. It's also been... Well, I have mined some mainstone of it, but it hasn't actually yielded very much useful stuff. The rewards in these labyrinths are actually fairly lackluster. Um, so I haven't made much of an effort to go into it. But you can see I have indeed cut a very large slot through the labyrinth. There's a minotaur down there. Oh, that's a pinch beetle. No one's looking at him. But yeah, this has not really yielded anything useful. There was a chest over there, one of those TNT rooms. It yielded like a pair of shears or something. But I mined out all the bedrock of the walls over here, as you can see. That's provided me with a lot of bedrock dust, which was the source of my bedrock armor and some other things like gearboxes. Anyways, back to the overworld. somewhere, don't really mind. Alright, and I don't know what this book over here is. Oh, right, it takes me to another part of the Twilight Forest, where one of those Aurora castles generated. They're not done yet, as far as I can tell. Certainly don't look done. Anyways, extractors are on and processing. How much ore do I actually have in the system? Not a lot, except for redstone. Strange. Oh, and silver. Actually, some of some of these I have quite a bit of. I'm guessing the silver is from the magic crops. Quite a few flakes. I'll turn the flakes smelting on too, just so you can see how fast they're going. I just have to turn the extractors off to do that. So these heat up. i reach for 2,000 degrees. And yes, I'm standing on it. 1978, 1920, 1937. Don't know why Sandra's spawning. I put down a magnum torch. Oh well. And there we go. 
That's how fast these things are going. It's really quite useful. Otherwise, I system would probably fill up with lights completely. I don't know which I have more of, flakes or ore. Hmm. It's kind of comparable at this point. Anyways, the stuff from the mining machines comes in through this tesseract here. Goes into this chest, which then dumps it into the ME system. Mining machines, will, I'll turn them on and see if they actually work. They seem to have maxed out for some reason or whatever. Yeah, they're not actually working. They used to pull in a few hundred blocks a second. At this point, I'm not sure I'm actually going to go and fix them because I don't need any more resources. I always have more machines in these chests. I don't know why I didn't put them in any system. Some IC2 stuff, tanker stuff, thermal expansion stuff, vertigraft, react craft, a lot of schematics. And here's how I've been charging the gravel gun, filling the jetpack, which I should do soon. And this. Uh, this liquid crystal is for melting the geostrata crystals down. It's what you see in these t decorative tanks here. Just, you know, because it, look, it looks nice. And in case you're wondering, the rainbow stuff in the walls, it's opal from geostrata. It was inspired by the aurora blocks from Twilight Forest. Um, over here, just a bridge. I s was digging around the mob code, the AI code. Found a little bug exploit, I guess. This is actually a carpets on top of signs. You can see on the mini-map it actually thinks it's transparent, so now I'm rendering it. It turns out Mob AI does not recognize carpets as a block at all, nor does it recognize signs, so they actually won't run across this bridge. So, because this Rainbow Force, of course, doesn't spawn mobs, but this biome, well, normally would if it weren't for this. So, makes my island feel like a little bit more mob-proof. Anyways... I'm going to go out to the, uh, I'm going to sleep in bed first, but I'm going to go out to the heavy water extractor, because people have been saying that, you know, the heavy water pump doesn't work. Well, it does. It's just you kind of have to use it the right way. Essentially, so to avoid running through the, mo the magic crops forums again. Let's go around this way. It's only going to take a second, so only a couple thousand blocks away. Actually, not a couple thousand, it's probably like 600. I haven't actually measured. It only takes a few minutes to go here. Down here is just a ravine with some lava in it, it's where my main source of lava was until I got to the nether. Running across water is actually really convenient here. Thanks to my sprints only gives out, of course. Which could happen any second now. Which is why I'm falling the lily pads. That way I'll have something to stand on. Yep, there we go. Now I can resume sprinting. And we want to go around here. There's a big chunk of border error here because I installed Thawncraft after the world was created and that stupid magic forest it remapped all the biomes. This would have been an ocean otherwise though, presumably, so I'm not terribly unhappy about it on this side of the world. I really don't like having ocean biomes next to me. It's a huge expanse of water. Anyways, out around this side here. Somewhere in here, um, there it is. Heavy water pump's currently off, because I was filling my ME system with water. Or heavy water, rather. But basically, what you have to do is submerge it underwater completely by, I think, a depth of at least 16 blocks. Uh, it needs to be in an ocean biome, that's why I'm here, all the way out this way. And you need to give it 512 newton meters of power, and at least... Uh, I believe 65 kilowatts of power. I've given it more just to speed it up. And we'll just pipe liquid out the side. It needs to have at least three water blocks adjacent to the sides. Obviously it can't be four because you need to pipe the liquid out. But if you had, say, a torch here, it wouldn't work. Or you had a dirt block there, it wouldn't work. It's not actually difficult to do. This is you know, just a wireless receiver. The oil over there. Well after I need the oil. Anyways, oh, another natural rainbow tree. It's a little bit of a strange thing on the main map there. Pulling a bat. No, actually, it isn't a bat because I've got Legacy Craft installed. It's disabled bat spawning. And another chunk here. Alright. 
The nice thing about these chunkers is if you fly, you can actually usually fly across them. Of course, the one time I try to demonstrate that fact, I get stuck in it. Oh well. Um, there's going to be a couple of lag spikes as I approach my base again. I presume it's something to do with the loading the chunk order that loads all those chunks. So I think if the chunk order itself gets unloaded, it tends to behave a little bit strangely. Actually, no, that'd be kind of stupid, wouldn't it? There's the spike. Maybe one more. And there we go. Eggs everywhere. It's part of the problem of having those item vacuums. Oh, I never showed you the item vacuums. Uh, four item vacuums over here, sucking up everything from the farms. The problem is they draw on stuff from hundreds of blocks away, so it's pulling in eggs from all over the map, because there's chickens everywhere apparently. It's actually kind of irritating. Right, let's get away from that. Dump the rest of that. In the nether we don't really have anything much. We've got the remnants of an old lava pump, the remnants of a boar. It's not really worth going to, there, and there's nothing in the end. Uh, you can see I got a bunch of liquids, strangely more tritium than deuterium, which is unusual. Ethanol, jet fuel, lubricant, water, lava, heavy water, hexafluoride, sodium, chlorine, oxygen, UU matter, which I have an absurdly large amount of, and oil. And I think that's it for what's in this world, at least I can remember, and is for like what there is to go over that's relevant to what you know what I can do or what you can do with my mods. I mean, like this sort of thing is just icy too, you know, making scrap. Um, that was just for making a digital miner for mechanism. Decon starts, of course, smeltery. Anyways, so I think that's it. So I'm going to end the video now, and hopefully this will give people some idea of some of the things you can do with these machines, and also potentially serve as like a how to use them. Oh wait, just before I go for it, show you the jet engine backup power. Basically it's just a series of jet engines, all hooked up to dynamos, hooked up to the main power bus around the house. Um, jet fuel supply, right now it's off because there's redstone going in. Um, obviously the cages are here so nothing gets inside the jet engines because that ends badly. But yeah, that's basically just hooked up to the same conduit or cable now because the conduits don't have enough capacity. But it just runs around the entire length of the house. Same thing with the big ME cable up above. And just deep storage units for stuff to store in bulk. But anyways, that now, this time around, actually is it for autocrafting. Uh, so, so hopefully this video will show people how to use the stuff and kind of think, give them ideas for well, what, what you can actually use it for. So people will actually realize there's it's not just a bunch of... Uh, Roadcraft isn't just about generating massive amounts of power. There's a lot of machines you can use to actually make your game easier slash more productive slash just faster and basically well I guess that's it